So what we wanted to have a look at now is the second type of divisibility proof. And I've called these divisibility proofs with a twist, but really what they have in here, they have one part where there is some kind of splitting up uh, that you'll see what I mean in a second when I do this splitting up bit. You'll see it when it comes up, okay? So we're going to just go straight in. It says, prove by induction that 8 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n is divisible by 5. Well, we know the different starting points for this. First of all, I'm going to start off by saying, let f of n equal 8 to the n minus 3 to the n, because it's just going to make the whole question a bit easier if I've got that language. And then I'm going to show that it is true for n equals 1. So f of 1 is 8 to the power of 1 minus 3 to the power of 1, which is 5, which is clearly divisible by 5. So it is true for n equals 1. Next step. Yep. So I'm going to assume that it is true for n equals k. Assume true for n equals k. In other words, f of k, which is equal to 8 to the power of k minus 3 to the power of k, is divisible by 5. Just as we expected from before. And then I'm going to try and show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. What did we say the trick was for divisibility? Uh, f of k plus 1 minus f of k. Good. And so we'll do all of that subbing in. So it's going to be 8 to the power of k plus 1 minus 3 to the power of k plus 1. And then we're going to subtract this one, which is going to be subtracting 8 to the power of k. But it's going to become a 3 to the power of k when we get to this stage that we've got here. So we want to try and get them in the same kind of powers that we've got here. And then uh, you split it up into 8 to the power of k minus 3. Good. So this is 8 to the power of 1 times by 8 to the power of k minus 3 to the power of 1 times by 3 to the power of k minus 8 to the power of k plus 3 to the power of k like this. And so we just want to then gather together the like terms that we've got. So I've got 8, lots of this, minus 1, lots of this which is 7 times 8 to the power of k. And then I've got minus 3 lots of this plus 1 lot of this, which is minus 2 lots of 3 to the power of k. Now, this is the point where we're in a bit of a pickle because I don't think that they've got any kind of common factor. And the thing I usually have had in the questions we've done so far is we were just able to pull out a factor of 5 to show that it's divisible by 5. So this is where the twist comes in, and it's the splitting up of this thing that we've got here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and break this 7 down in a way that will allow me to write it in terms of f of k and also produce something to do with a factor of 5. So in what way shall I split this 7 lots of 8k? Shall I, what, how shall I apportion those 7 lots of it? Shall I do it? What kind of way could I do that? So I, yeah, I could do 5 lots of 8 to the power of k and 2 lots of 8 to the power of k. So this is the bit that I'm talking about. This is what I mean by the splitting up. I'm going to split this into this thing that I've got here. And then I've still got that minus 2 times 3 to the power of k. So let's just keep going with this for a second. This is 5 times 8 to the power of k plus 2 lots of 8 to the power of k minus 3 to the power of k. And we already know something about 8 to the power of k minus 3 to the power of k. It's divisible by 5, it's divisible by five and it's the same as f of k. So I can write this as 5 times 8 to the power of k plus 2 f of k. This is f of k here. So I'm just going to write down what that left-hand side is. It's f of k of 1, f of k plus 1, sorry, minus f of k. I'm going to get the page extender on here as well. And then I'm just going to finally uh, rearrange it so that I just add that f of k back onto the other side. So I have 5 times 8 to the power of k plus 3 f of k. This is clearly divisible by 5. And we also, this is divisible by 5. 
because we assumed that it was earlier. Hence, f of k plus 1 is divisible by 5. And then we'll just do the conclusion statements. So we can say, since it is true for n equals 1, and it is true for n equals k plus 1, when assumed true for n equals k, it is true for, what did this question want, positive integers? Didn't really say anything, so it's true for the positive integers n. So true for all n as positive integers. And so really this bit that we did here is we just want to annotate back what happened is we wanted to break this down. We wanted to split, split it up so we had some multiple of f of k, leaving another part. which was a multiple of 5. So that was the bit that was the issue there. We made it match this thing here so that we could make it match the original thing of f of k. We split it into those two pieces, and we ended up with this being two lots of f of k. Remember to always find out what f of k plus 1 is by adding the f of k's back on, and then it's just that same kind of pattern that we've got here. Now, in the exam, people often get to this stage and then go like, uh-oh, something has gone wrong. But when I look at this, when I see 7 and 2, my brain is already telling me 5 because I can just see connections between 7 and 2. So that's why you can, if you ever see that two numbers and you think there's something to do with them, they're linked together by 5 somehow, then you want to just try this kind of twist property to it, which is splitting it so that you get multiples of f of k. So we're going to try one more question that's like this together, and then we're going to do a bit of practice, and then we'll move on to matrix ones as well. So this one wants us to prove by induction for all positive integers n, 11 to the power of n plus 1 plus 12 to the power of 2n minus 1 is divisible by 133. So first of all, I just think this is pretty cool that this like random expression that we've got here is divisible by 133. Like I just, I just think that's interesting. It's not even divisible by 2 or 4 or 5. It's divisible by some like random huge number that we've got of 133. So it's not clear it's going to have a twist to it, but there will be a twist in a moment. So again, we're going to go through the same process. So we're going to let f of n equal 11 to the power of n plus 1 plus 12 to the power of 2n minus 1. And then we're going to show that it's true for n equals 1. In other words, f of 1 is going to be 11 squared plus 12 to the power of 1. So 121 plus 12, or 133, which is obviously divisible by 133. So it is true for n equals 1. I'll just give you a chance to finish writing that bit down to keep up with me. And then we're going to assume that it's true for n equals k. In other words, f of k, which is equal to 11 to the power of k plus 1, plus 12 to the power of 2k minus 1, is divisible by 133. And then you know the next step. We're going to show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. This divisibility, so we still do that same trick. We're actually going to work with f of k plus 1 minus f of k, because later on we'll be able to add that f of k back on here. So just be really careful with subbing in with your k plus 1 here. It's going to be 11 to the power of k plus 1 plus 1, so k plus 2, and then 12 to the power of, this is 2 times k plus 1, 
minus 1, what will that simplify to? 2k plus 1. Because you have 2k plus 2, and then minus 1, it becomes 2k plus 1. And we're going to be subtracting from this f of k, so that's going to be 11 to the power of k plus 1. And remember, it's subtracting both of these bits, subtracting 12 to the power of 2k minus 1. Now, what we want to do is we want to make these bits, we want to make them look more like f of k. At the moment, the powers are the problem, so I want to I want to adjust them. Good. Eleven times eleven to the power of k plus one, plus twelve squared. Good. So do you see here? Marco was trying to take it to the two k minus one, so he knew if he took two out, he could reduce that power down from two k plus one to two k minus one. That's very good. Then we. We've now got them all in the matching powers, and the powers all resemble the f of k powers. So we're trying to get it all in the same language, really, aren't we? So we can probably do a bit of the simplifying here pretty quickly. I've got 11 lots of this minus 1 lot of this, which is 10 lots of 11 to the power of k plus 1. And then the next part is going to be what? 143. 143. We've got 144, and we're taking away 1 which is 143 times 12 to the power of 2k minus 1. Now, we wanted the divisibility to be 133. Again, you've got 10 and 143, so clearly we can see that connection of 133 between them, meaning I'm going to split this one into... 133. Yeah, so I'm going to split it into a 10 and 133. So that's 11 to the power of k plus 1 plus 10 times 12 to the power of 2k minus 1, plus 133 times 12 to the power of 2k minus 1. And I'm going to highlight, just like I did on the previous one, the splitting has happened here into these two pieces. And I did that in order to create uh, something that's a multiple of f of k and an extra bit, which is going to be the multiple of 133. So I've now got 10 lots of 11 to the power of k plus 1, and 12 to the power of 2k minus 1, which is f of k. And I've got 133 times 12 to the power of 2k minus 1. And that whole thing is f of k plus 1 minus f of k. So we just finish off by saying what f of k plus 1 is equal to, which is 11 f of k plus 133 times 12 to the power of 2k minus 1. We obviously just finish off with the same, the same statements that just make sense. This is divisible by 133. And I guess you could say because of our assumption. You don't have to say that. And clearly, this is divisible by 33. Sorry, 33, 133. Hence, f of k plus 1 is divisible by 133. And then the conclusion statement, which is pretty boring again. So since it's true for n equals 1 and true for n equals k plus 1, When assumed true for n equals k, it is true for all positive integers, comma, n. So just, just zoom out and think about what the strategy for these questions. The strategy is always going to be to do your f of k minus one, sorry, f of k plus one minus f of k. You're always going to, with these powers here, you're always going to make them look more like f of k. That was the strategy in the 2a type as well, and it was just plain divisibility without the twist. So sometimes people get really confused and they think, what are they trying to do with the powers? You're always trying to get the powers in the same language of the question, and really the language is the same powers or the same index numbers that you've seen in f of k. 
And then this bit I've highlighted in yellow shows that you can do that twist, which is the splitting up. And you can always spot that splitting up where you have, here we have a 10 and 143. There's always that link between 10 and 143. The difference between them is 133. And it allows you to rewrite this expression in terms of f of k from these two bits here, and then the remaining part, which makes it divisible by 133. So there's just a couple of questions from exercise 8b that um, use that kind of technique. So we'll look out for those. This is the more kind of this is more of a common one that I think would come up in the exam because it's harder, and they like to put in harder kinds of things that they can do. Okay.